Next into the den is Francis Kane, an entrepreneur on a mission to change the face of the doll business. The fact that the product clearly looks as good as it does and I think the ethos behind it, which is different to a lot of the other brands that are on the market at the moment, I'm hoping that that will come across. But it may be a bit of a rocky road, but we'll have to see when I get in there. She's already taken her idea from the playroom to the boardroom, but will the Dragons toy with investing in her range of products? Hello. My name is Frances Kane and I am the owner of A Girl For All Time, which is a range of toys designed to celebrate and empower girls through creative, imaginative play. I'm in the den today looking for 70,000 pounds for 10% investment of my four-year-old growing business. I founded A Girl For All Time really because of my own frustration at trying to find anything that was well-designed and intelligently done for my own daughter when she was much younger. Her choices seemed to be limited to plastic lipstick and pretend ironing boards. So I created a range of dolls that follow the adventures of the first born girls of the fictional Marchmont family through 500 years of time. Uh, stories that come with the range show the girls as heroes of their own stories. Currently we have five dolls here that you see. Um, and they have won a cache of industry awards for uh, top quality and design, including Play Doll of the Year two years in a row. Uh, 2015 for us uh, had, saw sales of just under 90,000 pounds. 2016 looks to be a strong year with 125% growth in the first four months of 2016. I do believe that our girls are so much more than pink and plastic lipstick and pretend ironing boards, and I think their toys should be as well. Uh, and I would actually like to show you some product, if I may. Frances Kane, originally from the American Midwest and now living in London, is looking for a boardroom buddy. You have the start of the family tree, Matilda. Ah. In exchange for 10% of her company, she'd like a dragon to invest 70,000 pounds in it. Peter Jones, has a confession to make. I'm quite an expert in dolls. Oh, right. Because over the last sort of 20 years, I've, I've grown up playing with dolls a lot. Because my youngest daughter is now nine, for my oldest daughter is 23. Mm. Um, so I have to say, there's something a bit eerie about the dolls. OK. I don't know, it looks a little bit sort of not as friendly as I would have mm. expected. Well, and, I, and, um, I'm, and I'm struggling, immediately struggling with the sort of the look. Because I look into this doll's eyes and there's sort of like a darkness there. Well, maybe slightly yeah. pensive, maybe at Pensive's times, or maybe right thoughtful, or... Yeah. Mm. And is that very much about you, Francis? Are you coming out in this doll? <laughs> well, I think what frustrated me when I was looking for something for my own daughter when she was growing up is I just felt things were either divided into kind of that very pink, bubbly, plastic thing or being shoved too far, I felt, into the adult world. These dolls are supposed to represent 9, 10, 11-year-old, um, and we're not always constantly smiling, I feel, are we? Um, I think having a companion who, who looks as we usually look is, is a positive thing. A product which makes Peter Jones feel uneasy. It's not a great start to Francis's pitch. But on to the business itself, and Tuka Suleiman wants to know if there's anything that makes this product stand out in a crowded market. What is your USP that could make this doll into a multi-million dollar business? Excellent point. What we've created is a whole brand behind the characters of the dolls. So as far as I know, we're the only brand on the market that does an entire family series, that does these kind of stories with the dolls and creates a, a depth of experience with each range. Is it a nice story or are there any bad things happen in that family? Well, um, 
you know, family narrative is really about knowing the good things and the bad things. So who's who's killed who in the family? Nobody's nobody's killed, but don't forget, Matilda is a Tudor girl, and Tudor was not always happy times. Well, tell me about her. What's the so Matilda times? is uh, 13 years old, and she is sent as a spy to the court of Henry VIII and to help advance her cousin Catherine Howard's chances to be queen. Uh, and Matilda keeps a secret diary, hence the title of her book, Matilda's Secret. And it's about her time at, at court, which did not go very well for Catherine Howard, if you know your history. Frances proves there's more to her dolls than your average kids' playthings, with talk of their unique backstories. But is millionaire mum of four, Sarah Willingham, buying the product or the business? I wouldn't buy one, and I am absolutely your target market if you want to sell the story of trying to empower your little girls to believe that they can do anything and be anything. And I don't think that's what you are achieving through these dolls. I really don't. I think your objective, you're saying, is to make it very real through history. I'm not convinced that that's the way to empower young girls of today, of course, they need to learn history. But I think the dolls look like they've sacrificed a lot. They've, they've, they are girls that have suffered a lot. So because I, I am your target market and I wouldn't buy one, I wish you all the best, but I'm afraid I'm not going to invest, so I'm out. Sarah Willingham just can't gel with Francis's dolls and decides to pass on the business opportunity. Can Peter Jones redeem things with talk of cold, hard cash. How much money have you spent so far developing the business? So over the last five years, having launched in 2012, uh, a grand total of about, in its rounding era, 400,000 pounds. Oh, wow. Whoa. Whoa. If I, if I could preface that with uh, the larger companies. Sorry, hang on, Francis. Yep. You've spent 400,000 pounds on dolls. It's been, a, it's been an investment a little bit every year. Where do you get that money from? Um, part of it has been from my own funds. Uh, part of it was from friends and family. Frances has gone to great lengths to bankroll a brand she believes is on the brink of success. But does Deborah Meaden share her conviction? To me, they're not joyous. Um, Did you ever play with dolls, Deborah? But never played with dolls. I, I was I'm, a, I'm I was not surprised. a, I was <laughs> <laughs> spiders, snakes, all of those things. <laughs> never dolls. Um, this is personal, so please <laughs> brace yourself. <laughs> Just don't like it. You know, they don't make me feel good. They don't tell a great story to me. So I'm really sorry, Francis. I'm out. I appreciate the comments. Thank you. Um. What's this one called? Lydia. Lydia, right. Hey, Lydia, I bought, bought you a doll. One of those over there. Are you excited about that? No, not really. Quite indifferent, really. Looks a bit sort of Botoxy. I'm sure you've done loads, loads and loads of research. It's not a market I know anything about, and I'm sure you've done absolutely stacks of it, and you've gone for something which is quite different. But um, I, ju I just can't get it at all. I'm afraid I'm out. Right, OK, thank you very much. The dragon who made a fortune in personalised gifts shows no interest in these bespoke dolls. And Tuka Suleiman has also come to a decision. You've gone a long way to build a business that has no appeal, in my view. I'm giving my own personal view. And, and I think you're probably a very professional person. You built this whole business around the idea of this doll. You spent £400,000 but I don't see it going where you want to see it. I, I'll be happy one day if you get your money back, but it's not going to be with my money, I'm afraid. And for that reason, I'm out. I genuinely like the fact that you've come up with a storyline behind what you're trying to achieve, but I personally think you've made some real fatal errors. There's a few things that scare me about this doll. Mm -hmm. When you go to bed at night and you put your doll down and you say good night and you sleep, if you open your eyes halfway through the night and your doll is still looking at you, mm. there's something really eerie about that. 
Mm. And I think you need to change that. And a very simple way of changing that is to make sure that the eyes close when you go sleep and lie eyes, flat. Sleep eyes, yeah. They're called, yeah, sleep eyes. Sleep I think. eyes. Yeah. I think that's important. Mm. And I think you do have to go back to the drawing board. I'm not going to invest because I don't know whether that 70,000 is enough to keep the business alive and make the changes necessary. Mm. So I'm going to say that I'm out. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Game over for Frances, who couldn't convince the dragons her dolls had mass appeal. She leaves the den with no more cash than when she arrived. I think she's really investable. Oh, yes. She was and good. she's got a good... I think the concept's right. It's just... It's sad that it's looking like that. Will I go out next week and start uh, making new face moulds for all of the dolls? Probably not. So maybe the dragons might have missed out on this one. I need to take a deep breath. Just to be clear, was that two million pounds? Two million pounds. Hello, Dragons. My name is Ajit Chambers. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Old London Underground Company. I have invested five years in getting my company in the position to open the first tourist adventure into a disused London tube station. And the station that I'm talking about is Down Street in Mayfair. We're putting three businesses into this site. The first business is the experiential tourist adventure. If you can imagine, we're recreating what happens during the Second World War, where families have to disappear from their houses and run and hide in these sites as the bombs are coming down. The tourists that come in really feel the fear and the noises outside and the smells of the old station. The second business is an events business. Some of these deep drop empty shaft areas are fabulous to put in small events and have just a little crowd of people in there for the launch of a CD or a product itself. And the third business is a food and beverage area. So you can see the picture here. I'm here today to offer a shareholding of 51% of the old London Underground Company in exchange for two million pounds. I need to take a deep breath. <laughs> Ajit, you left that right to the end. 51%. And just to be clear, was that £2 million? £2 million. Pounds. That's a lot of money, isn't it? It is a lot of money. Is that what it's going to cost to do all of this work? The capital expenditure on the site is £1,600,000. I've left 240000 for pre-operations and an extra two hundred slippage to bring it up to £2 million. You're offering 51%? Yes, true. And who gets the 49% that the balance? Who, where's that? I own the 49% at the moment. Can I ask what you do for a living? Yes, of course. Um, well, I spent five years completely on this. Before that, I used to work in banking in Switzerland and London. I just want to know how much money have you made and how much money could you put into this? I like questions like that. I've, um, <laughs> I've spent my own money on this, roughly £160,000 over five years and four months. And how much money have you got yourself, personally? Left? Yeah. Not a lot. So not a few hundred thousand, for example? I did sell my house recently to fund the last parts of this. Were you in a position to sell your house? I mean, have you got loads of other assets and...? Nope, that's it. So you have literally put everything on the line? Yes. If you don't get the money from us, and you don't get the money at all... Yes. What are you going to do? I'm sure someone else will be interested in taking this site. So why have you come to us? I, I would like a, a set of individuals to partner with me. I'll tell you what, give me 10%, and I'll give you all the advice you want. The part of the guidance and the advice is not something I need at this point. I mean, one of the beauties of this project is that we've done all that work. Um, what I need is an investor who will let us get on with this. Ajit, can you tell me how many square feet that is, the tourist attraction? 1,800 square feet there. 1,800 square feet? Yes. I'm, I'm slightly aghast now because you don't get many tourists in 1,800 feet. Let me um, run through the numbers with yeah. you. Yeah. We're looking at 10 tours of 16 people per day. So it's a very low number that are going through there. We're also looking at making it a low 
cost for the ticket, which is £18. So it's turning over £2,887 per day. Now, the events we've put in the business plan that we'd have one event a month um, at £10,000 an event, which will make £120,000 with the events. And then we're looking at the above ground section here, which brings in £288,000. So when you add the three business streams together, the net profit at the end of year one is 1.16 million. But the real point of coming here today is that we're at the design point. We've got the team to deliver it. The only thing we're missing is the investor. I completely agree that there is massive scope to use these sites. Personally, I don't buy into the, the tourist adventure down there. I don't buy into the events, and, and you've just basically got a random outlet at the top. If I took a site that was central London that I was going to spend £2 million on, I'd want a lot more than just over a million pounds turnover a year out of it. Can I, can I go into the detail with the turnover? Well, you already have. We've already had the turnover. It comes from 10 times 16 people a day coming through the experience. Very, very low turnover. Let me just be clear with the capacity. It's so That's small. That's a number we've set at a very low level. That's not our capacity. Ajit, you've worked so hard on this for five years. I can see that. I just don't think you found the right thing. It's just not for me, love. I'm out. The Den's food and drink expert decides to hold on to her cash as she becomes the first dragon to walk away from the deal. Is Peter Jones prepared to stump up the two million pounds to bankroll the business? Are you not building the very experience that no one would ever want to experience anyway? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't <laughs> think for one minute when those air raids were going off that people got very excited that they were going to go down into that area for 45 minutes. If I said to my child, I'm going to take you down yeah. to experience what your great-grandfather experienced in 1943, and you're going to be riddled with fear. I just see it as a, a pitch for cash, where we roll over the cash, where you walk up and have no risk. So I'm not, I'm not getting the sense that you've got anything at risk apart from the last four years of your life. Well, those four years are gone by the time you've walked into here. This is now a future opportunity. I'm not going to invest and say that I'm out. Thank you very much. My view is it is very ambitious. Okay. I'm very concerned for your well-being. I believe 1.6 million will probably get 30% of it finished. Mm. You'll run out of funds. Yep. There'll be a lock on the door, right? And then it'll probably stay derelict for another 50 years. Okay. So I hope you have plan B set up. On that basis, I must say, I'm out. Okay, thank you very much. Ajit's bid for investment appears to be going off the rails. Can Deborah Meaden, who made her millions in the leisure industry, get his business dream back on track? The issue for me, is you are not looking for anybody to add value to you. You are looking for an investor. You don't want somebody who wants to be all over it. I, I would be all over it. It's not that I don't want your input here. Listen, maybe it was just the words, but you actually said, I just want your money. I'm not sure why I would ever walk into something like this that is halfway through, I've had absolutely no input in whatsoever, uh, and just hand my cash over to somebody who's actually done the bit where I believe I can add value. You might find an investor, but you're not going to find an investor in somebody like me who's spent my life in tourism, because I know too much about this business. It's extremely disappointing you would say that, because I would love to have you on board with something like this, with your experience. Ajit, I actually don't think I'm the right investor for you. I know you think I am. <laughs> I don't think I am. OK. So I'm afraid I won't be. OK, thank you very much. I'm out. Only Nick Jenkins is left. He's already raised concerns about the capacity of the venue. Now he wants to know about the agreement Ajit has in place with the owners of the site. What about the lease? We're in negotiations for a two-year 
uh, non-payment period. And thereafter, what's the, what's the, the lease? How much? Uh, £80,000 a year. My concern is that actually, what do you really have if someone more credible comes in with a couple of million quid and says, actually, we'd like to take the lease, could they do that? You don't own this opportunity. True. Yeah, that's the problem. You don't own this opportunity. You're selling something that you don't own. No, of course not. The opportunity not. is the opportunity to lease this place. So that's up for grabs. Someone else could knock on the door and come up with another idea like this and do it. True. And then they'd own 100% of it. True. I'm not prepared to value it at £2 million. And for that reason, I'm out. OK, thank you very much. Ajit reaches the end of the line in the den, with doubts being raised that he has exclusive access to his disused station. His bid for a £2 million investment goes down the tube. The ability to sell something like this to a group of individuals that I'd like to have worked with is very difficult. And in reality, I didn't get that across. My pitch wasn't good enough. I simply move on to other investors. And there are very many of them, especially in that area of town. London-based fish and chip shop owner Rashpal Dillon is here with her two sons, Arminda and Gaminda. If we pull it off, the rewards will be amazing. Hi, I'm Gaminda. Hi, I'm Arminda. Hi, I'm Rushpal. We're the Boot Buddy. We're here today pitching for £60,000 in return for 10% equity in our company. So here in my hands, I have the homemade prototype of the Boot Buddy. The idea came one day after football training when I decided there had to be an easier way to clean my muddy football boots. So when I got home that day, I fiddled about with some items we had. The first being a brush, the second being a plastic water bottle, and the third being a plastic knife. When I stuck these three items together, we had a prototype which sort of worked. Now we have our own proper boot buddy in one compact portable gadget. OK, so the scraper here is to take off all the big chunks of mud. So what you do is you unscrew it, you fill up the water, take the boot buddy with you wherever you might be going, whether it's football, walking the dog or playing golf. Then when you wish to use it, unlock the head and then that's it, away you go. So as you can see here, what you have is a really simple and easy method of cleaning your boots in seconds. Right. To date, we've turned over £100,000 in the last year and we've sold 6,500 units. Thank you for your time and I hope together we can leave, leave the, the outdoors, outdoors outside. outside. Hoping to clean up in the den are the Dillon family, who are asking for £60,000 in return for a 10% stake in their company, Boot Buddy. How are you finding it, Nick? Therapeutic. Surprising how little water goes a long way. So they can maximise cleaning. Product demonstration over, and it's time for its 15-year-old inventor to leave his mother and older brother to face the dragon's questions. You've turned up at £100,000? Yes. What is the retail price? These sell for £12.99. OK, and costs? Costs right now? It's about seven pounds. Seven pounds? Yeah. I have to say, until you said that you've sold 100,000 pounds worth of product, um, I was a little bit in shock because it is just a, a water bottle with a brush on the end. The product works, it does exactly what it says it is going to do. And, you know, we get mums emailing us all the time saying, look, our kids never used to clean their boots, my husband's never used to clean their boots, and now they do because they've got a cool, fun gadget. But as you can see, when you were cleaning the boot, you run out pretty quickly um, and you'd have to refill to do your second boot. I think that that is a design fault. And I didn't want to say it in front of Arminda because the last thing I want to do is not praise and encourage, clearly, a young entrepreneur in the making. But my biggest issue is the fact you've got to continue to refill it. What's the structure? I mean, you're working out of home. Yeah, we are. We're working out of our home office. Uh, everything is done from there. Right. Um, the distribution as well is out of the basement of one of our uh, shops. So what's your real business? Fish and chips. Fish and chips? Catering, yes, yeah. fish and chips. Yeah. Oh, I love fish and chips. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I've got my own business so all what, of my what time. What is your business? Again, it's just fast food. Fast food? What's, what, like Ch what? Chicken. Chicken. 
And what's your share structure? I mean, who owns the business? <laughs> well, obviously, Mum's the boss. She put the money in, so Mum's got 60%, and... Uh, uh, everybody else has 10%. Right. And how much did Mum put in? Um, total, just below 250,000. How much? Sorry? 250,000 pounds? Yes. Wow. Um, oh, wow. Good Whoa. God. That's a lot of fish and chips you must have sold. Disbelief across the board as the revelation that the boot product has already been funded to the tune of a quarter of a million pounds leaves the dragons reeling. Serial investor Nick Jenkins wants answers. What did you spend it on? Uh, Just, um, tooling. Um, well, how, how much would the tooling cost for something like that? Just below 40,000. Yeah. The intellectual property, below 150. Hmm, hmm. Just, oh, oh. Yeah. And above. stock, because sorry, it's did, a sorry, high... Sorry, sorry, did, did you say you'd spend £150,000 on the intellectual property? Below, just uh, below. I, I, it, the design's <sighs> registered in 22 countries. Yeah. That's an enormous amount of money to have spent on something quite simple. Enormous! I, I just don't understand why so much. We thought it, it was the best thing to I do. I just think you could have done it for a hell of a lot less. Like a fraction of that. That money you put in, is it a loan or it's a Yeah, it's, it's a director's loan. So but basically, is... the company owes you the money? Yeah, but it's not like that it's interest or I'm not in a rush for it. You know, it's, I, don't, I don't want to stifle the growth of their company. Yeah. Are you in the position to look in a bigger picture and say, I'd waive my director's loan on the basis that by bringing their dragon on board, I might get some actual dividends back? If it helps the company move forward and it's the right decision, then yes. Rashpal's calm demeanour and a suggestion that she might waive the quarter of a million pound loan has raised a few dragon eyebrows. Can she snatch victory from the jaws of defeat? When it gets to the point that most of the people playing football would need to buy this in order for this investment to break even, it's a bit frightening. To make any sense of this as an investment, you would have to sell more than I believe that you can sell in this market. Um, so for that reason, I'm out. Guys, I'm going to tell you where I am. Um, I've got a house full of muddy boots. And I'm still... I'm still using the outdoor tap and the scrubbing brush. I. I just don't think I'd use it. You know, and I'm a mum surrounded by muddy boots, so I'm, I'm going to say no, but we really wish you all the best. Thank you. So good luck, but I'm afraid I'm out. A second dragon brush off for the Battersea based entrepreneurs. Now the chips are down, where does Tuka Suleiman stand? It needs a lot. It, it, it needs. Um, to be focused, to sell it, somebody who's got the contacts, somebody who can run the website, somebody who can give you some offices to work out of. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm willing to give you all the money, but I want 35%. I like an awful lot about it. I like the story that it was invented by your son, and I think you're a very, very supportive mum. Thank you. I think you've done an amazing job, and I, I think it's a, it, it's a good product. What's holding me back is that it's just not an area that I love. You know, I'm not into football. I can always feel I can stand up and proudly shout about the brands I'm involved with because I feel it. I just don't think I'm the right fit for you, you know, and that... Uh, I suspect you're going to get a better fit here, which is kind of a shame because I'd love to be involved with it, but I don't think I'm going to do the best job for you. It's not just football that we can restrict it to. That's the beauty of it. We can keep the same like design and just change the bristles, bristles very easily. For each so then market. Anyone can actually use this product and it's easy. Dog walkers, golf, and also the 
um, people who work on building sites, tarmac, you know, if you change the bristles, make them harder, you know, so it's anybody with muddy boots. Um, she's persuasive, your mother, isn't she? Well, I don't normally do this because 60,000 isn't a huge ask. You know, often I'll sit here and say, but it's 60,000 pounds, I want it on my own. But I'm not offering the full package. But I would, I would love to be involved. So I'm going to offer you half of the money. And I would want... Twelve and a half percent of the business. But what I would say is that I'd rather we parked your money. We didn't write it off, so it said, look, when we've got our money out or there was an exit, it still sat there because it's the thing, it's the thing that got the business off the ground. With offers on the table from Tuka Suleiman and Deborah Meaden, the boot buddy has found some dragon friends in the den. Will seeing his fellow dragons make bids incentivize Peter Jones to enter the mix? Do you know what's really interesting is I can absolutely see tens of thousands of these being sold. If you can find a way to get that manufacturing cost at a level, I could see this being sold almost with every pair, every pair of boots that's sold. Tuka and Deborah have both given you an offer. And in my head, instinctively, I would normally think I'm going to go and compete with them. I'm actually sitting here thinking, I wonder whether three dragons could give this exactly what this needs. With my contacts in some of the sports places, you know, making use of Tuka, he's been trying to for, for almost a year now to give away his office <laughs> in any investment. And it would be, it'd actually make me happy to be part of that, that I would see somebody use his office for once. <laughs> I think that this has a real chance of success. But do what Deborah suggests, you keep your quarter of a million, because I think it's really important that you get your money back. I agree with that now. So I will offer you £20,000 for 10%, if the other dragons agreed, but you get three dragons. I, I would... I would certainly, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to do that. OK. The three of us will make a fantastic team. Do you want to go and think about that and have yeah. a chat? Mm -hmm. Whilst Arminder nervously waits outside, his mum and brother have a huge decision to make. We're three of them now, we've got all those three markets. Peter Jones, Tuka Suleiman and Deborah Meaden are each offering £20,000 for 10% of the business. So if you've got to take a smaller chunk of the pie, and it's your favourite number. But giving away nearly a third of their company in total, three times what they were offering when they entered the den, is a big ask for the entrepreneurs. Seeing as it's mum's the boss. No, I'm... Um, yeah, we, we would love to work with all three of you. Then. Oh, great. Three's my favourite number anyway. So thank you is so much. Is it your lucky number, It is my say? lucky number. There you are. Well, well, done. well done. Fantastic. Oh, OK. <laughs> The man of the hour. <laughs> you think, well done, do you, you think Mum made the right decision? <laughs> yes, best decision. <laughs> it's been a remarkable Thank turnaround. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. From the shock revelation of Rash Powell's £250,000 investment into the company to the Dragons agreeing that it would eventually be paid back. The Dillon clan leave the den with a Dragon dream team on board. That's, that's intense. There's no words that can explain what I'm feeling. It's amazing just to have one dragon, but to have three is just overwhelming. <laughs>